So now in the previous video, we said we're going to basically summarize and look at this lecture from the gastrulation side and perspective, and then later on the organogenesis side and perspective. So what we're going to do in this next video is look at gastrulation in a little bit more detail. And most of this video should definitely be a review. We've looked at gastrulation during animal development when we looked at unicont diversity. And so it's important to take home these facts that we've already looked at and make sure we have a good background and foundational structural knowledge of what this process is all about. So gastrulation, we're going to use a term that we've learned thus far in this lecture, is all about morph. It's a morphological process. So it refers to some sort of shape change, therefore. So what we're going to see here is the theme of today, which is taking a blastula and allowing it to develop because we ended development one essentially at a blastula stage, which was post cleavage, post division without cell growth. Now it's time to grow. Now it's time to differentiate. And all of that has to occur initially through a process of gastrulation in which the blastula itself undergoes morphological changes. So again, morphological is obviously going to be referring to the shape. And that's what's going to happen. The blastula is now going to change its shape. How so? Well, initially, a blastula is simply just a hollow ball with a blastocele center, fluid-filled cavity in the middle. Um, but it's a hollow ball of these small cells. And these very small cells that are, were a result of cleavage were blastomeres. What are we going to do? We're going to take these blastomeres. We're going to apply some morphological change to them. That morphological change will result in a layered embryo. So we state that these blastomeres essentially morph into, they change their shape into a layered embryo. So that's the key word here, a layered embryo. So before we were unlayered, now we are layered. When you have this layered embryo, you undergo the process of gastrulation and thus you form a gastrula. So gastrula. And how are we doing this? This is through the process, of course, of gastrulation. So we can put that on top of the arrow as the process that leads to a formation of a gastrula. What did we start off with? A blastula. So make sure you're able to... Uh, use those terms correctly and in their right forms of embryonic development. So now let's take a look and remind ourselves what a gastrula really is and we'll do that over here. So this is all a review hopefully. A gastrula is just going to be a structure of embryonic germ layers. It contains several embryonic germ layers depending on what species, what animal, what organism we're looking at. Let's remind ourselves those layers from the outside, let's say first would be the ectoderm. Ecto meaning outer or exterior and derm meaning layer here. And this is exactly what we just said. It's the outer layer. This should be 100% a review for most of us here. In addition, Ectoderm will also have its opposite. I like to think of it as, let's say, the endoderm. That's the interior portion, endo for that reason. The endoderm, more specifically, will say, lines the embryonic, we'll give it a little bit more detail here, lines the embryonic digestive cavity slash tract. So that's our key here, digestive tract slash cavity. So always refer to this digestive tract and cavity um, simultaneously with the endoderm from an embryonic germ layer perspective. And that's what our second layer of the gastrul is. And then also, sometimes, you may have a mesoderm, mesoderm, whatever you want to call it. This is just going to be the layer between the ecto plus the endo. It's in between the ecto and endo layers, and thus it's the meso, middle layer. Now let's just ground this into some context. Which organisms would have just the ecto and endo, and which would have all three? Of course, we're referring to those organisms that we hopefully did not forget. The diploblasts versus their counterparts, the triploblasts. This was a major, very early, early sort of uh, key characteristic of organisms and animal development and animal classification that's important to remember here. Diploblasts are, of course, going to be those organisms that only have the endo plus ecto. 
germ layers during their embryonic development. Thus, the gastrula of a diploblastic organism contains an endoderm and an ectoderm, and is, it is, does not have a mesoderm. Let's just remember an example of this so that we're not just blindly stating what a diploblast is. An example uh, is basically any organism that is radially symmetrical. So radially symmetric organisms are the example here. A classic one would be, we can put this in parentheses down here, cnidarians. It's a very simple organisms, those cnidarians, and therefore they follow this diploplastic, very simple germ layer embryonic development at the gastrula level. Triploblast, on the other hand, a little bit more advanced, like you and I. These involve all three germ layers, endo, ecto, and meso. So all three germ layer development, let's say all three germ layer DEV for development. And here uh, we're going to be specifically referring to organisms usually that are vertebrates and they're also usually simultaneously going to be uh, bilaterally symmetric organisms here. And so that's basically the examples that we have. These are the higher order organisms. We broadly call these organisms that were bilaterally symmetrical, those of bilateria. Those bilaterians, like you and I, we follow this triploblastic route of gastrula development. And that's our look at gastrulation. Hopefully most, most of it was a review. And now we're going to look even further into the ideas of development um, from more of a uh, specific and species level perspective.